Assalam Alaikum and welcome to Perspective. Uh, 5th August uh, today marks uh, a day of exploitation. Uh, Yome Istesal, as far as the Kashmiri cause is concerned. We'll be talking a little bit about that. Of course, the Kashmiri cause is very close to our hearts. We've also had the Prime Minister today talk about how Pakistan will continue to extend its unstinted moral, political, and diplomatic support for the Kashmiri cause. Um, I have with me today Ali Reza Sayed, who is an expert on Kashmir affairs. He's also chairman of Kashmir Council EU. Thank you for joining us. Um, Ali Reza Sayed, sir, we, we know about the Kashmiri struggle. We stand with our Kashmiri brethren. There are no two opinions uh, on that. Overall, as far as you know, uh, the Kashmiri cause is concerned, uh, oh, the world has, you know, unfortunately, I have to say, uh, continues today even to turn an almost blind eye to the struggle of the Kashmiri brethren. Uh, the Muslim, we've also, the OIC also has, uh, you know, shown their reaction, their uh, solidarity to the Kashmiri cause. Why do you think that even today, uh, you know, we, we have this uh, look, the, looking the other way kind of attitude? Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Uh, you know, it's the day, the 5th of August, uh, 2019, when uh, Modi government tried, and in my opinion, uh, they, they thought that uh, revoking the Article 370 and 35A, they can achieve their, uh, their goal. But up to now, they failed. And uh, I think that uh, whatever uh, the Modi government, since they came to power, they tried uh, with the brutal force. They tried to kill the youths uh, in fake encounters. They tried to uh, put the human rights activists in prison, the journalists in prison, the students in prison. When all these uh, methods they tried, but they failed. Because the Kashmiri, they, uh, the day one, they, uh, they were uh, ready to accept only that the United Nations resolution, which were given to the mm. people of Kashmir, the right mm. to decide and right to the uh, fair and uh, fair and uh, mm. the plebiscite in Jammu and Kashmir. But Modi is trying to change the demography of of uh, that uh, situation mm. because they think that. Uh, with change the demo uh, demography there they can achieve the uh, desired result from mm. uh, from the plebiscite and i am uh, i am convinced that modi is trying to change the demography and then they will come uh, to the plebiscite uh, whenever they will think that it's uh, it's in their fa favor but up to up to now they fail and they the will struggle. fail because the determination of the people of jammu and kashmir is mm. that they want their basic rights which were promised by the uh, indian then prime minister jawaharlal nehru also not once mm. but several times in several uh, 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 fronts that the, the kashmiri people will get mm. their right to decide for their future so we are asking the international community that this double standard, which is applied on Kashmiris, uh, look at uh, Ukraine. What is happening there? What mm. happened in uh, uh, other part of the world, South uh, South Sudan, uh, Kosovo, and uh, East Timor? But the the people of Kashmir for 75 years they are waiting to imp the implementation of the U UN resolution, and mm. the the countries who were uh, participating at that time, we are asking them to to come forward and implement the uh, uh, the resolutions, because India is always trying to uh, all the international law. They are uh, uh, they are trying to 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 do in in their favor. But the international community knows that what is happening there. Last, just last week, uh, uh, two weeks ago. There were uh, uh, a meeting of G20 for tourism, and it was not a high-level meeting. But several countries they boycotted, and even European Union, their representative there was not their uh, the head of the mission, 
but it was a low level uh, uh, officer went to the Srinagar. So it was failed also. And now we are trying to convince the European Union and the international community that if everybody wants peace there, we, the Kashmiri, they want, they are the first to want mm. uh, the mm. peace. But mm. the peace only can come when the Kashmiris, they will get their rights. Without that, uh, it will not be possible. A, a peace, permanent peace in that region will not be possible. And Kashmiri, they already declared... a spillover and, effect of what's happening to the Kashmiris within India also? Because, you know, the, the rights of minorities overall, because, uh, you know, Modi's style of politics, the barbarity uh, is, of course, extending to other minorities now also. And that should be of particular concern to the world all over also. And, you know, uh, for the Manipur uh, incidents, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. happened with the Christian minority there, their mm -hmm. churches were burned, their mm -hmm. uh, livelihood was destroyed by the Hinduata extremist Hindus and they are encouraged and they are supported by the RSS and the Modi government. So that is, uh, that was uh, uh, here in, in Europe, everybody is talking now. And now we will say that they, they started now in, uh, in Manipur or in other part of the, the Indian, uh, India itself. But we are crying for, for years that the Modi government is uh, going on the Nazi path and mm -hmm. they will uh, they will create the situation like we had in 1930s and 1940s in Europe. Mm -hmm. And Europe has seen the destruction of uh, this Nazism or extremism. Mm -hmm. and, and now it is uh, the Budi, what he is trying is in create the same situation in Asia. Mm -hmm. And we should not forget that the Pakistan has uh, uh, atomic bomb also, uh, China has, uh, India has. So yes, these are the three are, nuclear you know, powers. Actually, nuclear arsenal, uh, you know, are, are prevalent in the area. Both the neighbors are hostile. Overall, it should be of particular concern, right? But. Uh, do you think also that as far as the international community is concerned, uh, you know, the, 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 their scenario as far as EU you're talking about or whether we talk about, you know, America or whether we talk about what's happening all over the world, as far as the clout of India is concerned, do you think they're able to camouflage what's happening convincingly anymore or do you think it's actually now showing to the world uh, that it's no. all an image, an orchestrated image? that unfortunately is now a facade is, is cracking, so to speak. Yes, fa facade is cracking. You know, hmm. you have seen there are some reports came from U.S. also. Some uh, uh, human rights uh, organization have uh, uh, released some reports what is hmm. happening in Kashmir. And I think the, the even uh, they have the business interest or uh, economic interest with the mm. India as it is the uh, the biggest uh, population mm. in in uh, in the world, but one thing what we are saying here is that there are some values and then there are some interests. The values cannot be changed. Only the mm. interest change time to time. Okay, if you you want to have the uh, uh, the business or the trade with India, well, mm. but not on the expense of the human rights violation which is going on in India itself. If you mm. see Haryana, what happened uh, uh, two days ago, what happened in Manipur, what happened in, in other part of the uh, India, but on Kashmir, they are trying a genocide and we, we are asking the international community to stop this genocide before it's too late because the people of Kashmir they are crying and they are asking the international community to play their role to stop this, not the policy of appeasement, but the policy of stopping these, uh, these fascist regimes. Right. Um, Ali Raza Sahib, of course, you know, the historic struggles of leaders like Saeed Ali Gilani, martyrs like Makbul Bhatt, Burhan Wani, Ashraf Serai, you know, there is, an, and the unlawful detention of other leaders like Omar Farooq, Sabir Shah, Yasir Malik, all of these, and their appeal to, uh, you know, the, the international community. What about, you know, the, you've heard 
what Prime Minister also said today. Pakistan stands in solidarity. We've also tried to do as, as much as possible to you know, uh, further the Kashmiri cause. Do you think perhaps more effort, consistent effort is needed here also? Yes, uh, I think the more consistent efforts needed hmm. and hmm. in on the diplomatic front and on the lobbying front, I, hmm. I think the, we should have, uh, the Pakistan should nominate a, an envoy, Kashmir envoy especially, to show the, the, uh, the interest or the sincerity of the, hmm. uh, of the Pakistan because the the problem is that the the international community they want to listen to the kashmiris so mm -hmm. we can have somebody from the kashmir anybody can be uh, the envoy for uh, for the uh, for pakistan for kashmiri mm -hmm. people to mm -hmm. visit all the capitals and have uh, the facts and figures with with, uh, with him or with her mm -hmm. and that we can we can do that and the other thing is that we have to create the awareness in Azad Kashmir also in Pakistan mm -hmm. because the Pakistan is the only country in the world which is standing with the Kashmiri people and they are they are doing whatever they can but there is need to be done more. Right, fair enough. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for your very valuable input today uh, when we actually, uh, you know, it's a day of exploitation for us. It's a, it's a day of Yome Istesal and, and uh, uh, your input is, is very much appreciated. Thank you for joining us. We'll be taking a short break after which we'll come back to talk about the political developments of today as far as, of course, the former prime minister is concerned. The Tosha Khana case is concerned, uh, the meeting of the Council of Common Interests is concerned, all of those developments a little later on after a short break. Please stay with us. Welcome back. We'll be talking about uh, the ramifications of uh, today's uh, Tosha Khana case, uh, the former Prime Minister's disqualification, uh, what it means overall, legally also, and uh, its effects politically. Um, as far as the elections are concerned, the Council of Common Interests, and uh, you know, of course, the census, uh, the results of that uh, consultation, all of that today. I have with me Saif Jim Shaid Baryar, who's a political analyst. Thank you for being with us today. We also have uh, Haris Azmat, who's an advocate of the Supreme Court, a legal expert. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have with us Murtaza Solangi, who's a senior journalist. Thank you for joining us today. Ji, uh, Haris, let me start off with you. Overall, as far as the situation is concerned, the, the verdict today, what is your legal analysis of uh, you know the decision itself? And uh, of course, a lot is being alluded to it. Things like the the fact that you know the dishonesty of the former prime minister has been established beyond doubt, and uh, that uh, you know it is it is going to be there. There are some choice words used in the judgment itself. How do you look at it? Well, uh, one cannot uh, look at this judgment in isolation. If, uh, uh, personally speaking, as a lawyer, I'm not too big of a fan of politicians being uh, uh, sent out like this through judgments of the courts. Mm -hmm. But if one looks at the judgment of uh, Mia Muhammad Nawaz Sharif, uh, mm -hmm. this judgment, I would say, is on the same footing as that judgment. So in that judgment, a very hyper technicality was used that the form at the at the time, the three times prime minister was a sitting prime minister was disqualified because he didn't take uh, he took money from his son and which he didn't disclose in his tax returns. Mm -hmm. I, I would compare this judgment exactly with that judgment. I was never a fan of that but Mia Mohammed Nawaz Sharif's disqualification. Regardless of the legal technicality, isn't it true that the former prime minister was given countless chances to actually explain, explain himself, to actually the witnesses that he's talking about, to make sure that they attended? And there has been an unprecedented delay on his part in that regard. Is that true? Uh, well, you are absolutely correct that uh, mm. ample opportunities were provided. Uh, mm. uh, the uh, the but, however, this is mm. not unprecedented. The trial takes long, long, and long a very long time in Pakistan to conclude. 
Uh, but in this case, uh, the there are there are always two sides but of the, the picture. One of side the case, is Haris, exactly the nature of the same. case, certainly. And and I'm going to go to Mutaza Saab before I go to Jamshed. But the the nature of the case itself, when parallels uh, you know are being drawn, you're saying between uh, the former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif Saab and uh, in this case the PTI chief, there are certain areas in which we can categorically say that you know that there, there are differences also. Let me come back to you on that. I'm going to go to Mutaza Saab with that. Ji, Murta Saab, as a journalist, uh, you know, we, we saw the presser of uh, uh, the Minister of Information also. When parallels are being drawn, there are categorical differences, are there not, in both cases also? I don't see any parallels. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Uh, if you go back, you know, in history, hmm. Zulfkar Bhutto was deprived of the right uh, to go to a lower court when his murder case was directly shifted to Lahore High Court. I'm sure we remember this. Hmm. At the same time, when uh, you have convicted former prime ministers like Yusuf Raza Gilani hmm. or Nawaz Sharif, they hmm. were prime ministers. They hmm. were uh, uh, disqualified and convicted as hmm. sitting prime ministers. Hmm. In this case, hmm. uh, we have somebody who was mm. removed by the first constitutionally mandated process through the mm. parliament. So mm. a former prime minister who has been out of power for almost 15 months was convicted today. Now, if you go to the history of this case, there mm. were almost 40 hearings. Mm. Out of 40 hearings, a mm. uh, former uh, Prime Minister only attended three. And mm. out of those three, one was when he was already in custody. Right. And out of all those 40 hearings, mm. Mm. not even once, even mm. a great lawyer like Khaja Harris mm. no, debated or presented his case on merit. They were only mm. trying to somehow mm. delay the proceedings. And yesterday, Islamabad High Court directed his lawyers to go and appear and argue on maintainability. Today, mm. they were given chances three times. Mm. Not even once his lawyers were present. So even if uh, after all this uh, proceedings, we say that he was not given. Right. Fair uh, enough. Let me, let me go to Haris. I'm going to come to you with these questions, the legal side of it. Let me go to Saif Sabji. Saif Sab, politically speaking, you know, uh, the former Prime Minister again talked about peaceful protest. We don't see, as far as, you know, the political party side of things are concerned, uh, of course, at this time, he stands disqualified. That's that situation overall. How do you see, what is the shape of, of uh, his party looking to you in the next elections? <clears throat> Maruf, thank you for having me here. Uh, well, the very first thing is mm. that, in fact, Mr. Khan himself uh, has dismantled his political party. Mm. And why was it dismantled? Mm. Uh, don't we all remember what happened on 9th of May? Mm. Uh, uh, the, the, the youth of the party and the second tier leadership of the party, they were categorically, they were brought to the roots. Mm. And ultimately, they uh, sort of went against the, sta the state institutions. Mm. And they lodged an attack, more or less, mm. against uh, critical infrastructure of the state, including mm. the Jinnah House, there has got a great deal of ceremonial mm. importance. Mm. Now, if you look at the political optics and the outcomes of the current situation, I personally believe that when there is no top tier leadership of the party available, mm. then what is the political future of this Tosha Khana case? It's it's nothing but a void in the, in the political resolution or maybe the political future of the party itself. Even today, when this uh, hearing was ongoing, uh, I'll, I'll second Murtaza Sulangi Sahib. He was very right to point out that mm. the additional, additional session judge who was hearing the case, they waited for three times for the counsel of Mr. Khan to turn up and to defend this particular case. And when they did not turn after multiple reminders and waiting for three times, then a verdict was, was given. So this clearly means that maybe Mr. Khan was still trying to give an impression similar in fashion to 9th of May that even if today something happens, a similar scenario would be created. But politically speaking, Mr. Khan himself has created a void in PTI, right? Mm. And, and, well, and I believe that the future of PTI only uh, is, is possible if they try to restore 
the parliamentary optics or the parliamentary politics that that party has itself destroyed in the past two years. Mutsa uh, sahab, we talk about the struggle um, of political struggle and recently, you know, there are leaders of the of the PMLN that were also disqualified for five years. They've, they've stood by Mia Nawaz Sharif sahab. We've seen again, you know, like Saif is saying, he, you know, the dismantling of that second tier leadership. Uh, do you think that, you know, it will come together? What do you think will happen? Because, you know, one of the criticisms that, of course, you know, is leveled against the party itself is that it was too quick, the dismantling that we saw happening in front of us. I agree that uh, the dismantling of uh, PTI has been mm. on a much faster pace. Mm. Um, but, you know, the reasons for, the, for this uh, um, happening uh, for this development uh, are rooted uh, within the party itself. The way this party was organized, it was more of a mm. fan club. Mm. There was no serious political training of the cadres. Mm. So leaders you go see, and do, uh, they do are in the Qureshi, sahab, What do you see in the future? Well, uh, the mm. former uh, prime minister himself uh, mm. declared him as the successor, so he will inherit whatever the rump is left. Do you think that there will be, I know you're calling it rump, but do you think they will be able to, to you know, string together some, some sort of a party for the elections? Because in KP also we've seen that, you know, there's a new party there in Punjab also. So, so you know, for them to now recoup the party and perhaps go into elections, do you think it will be possible in your opinion? Our history is like a rear view mirror. If you look, you know, uh, what has happened uh, over the years. In uh, 1997, hmm. when PMLN uh, got two third majority, hmm. Benazir Bhutto had only 15 or 18 seats. Then, after the coup of uh, October 12, 99, the hmm. same PMLN that had two third majority in hmm. October 2002 election secured only 19 seats. Mm. So if history is any yardstick to measure and compared with uh, the type of the cadres and you know the level of uh, steadfastness that we see in P PTI, uh, I, I anticipate that uh, the party will not be banned, but it will probably be third or the fourth uh, large party in the parliament. Right, fair enough. Let me come back to you. Haris uh, overall, legally speaking, why do you think that there was this, you know, there is, of course, the, the, the fact that he is the leader of a political party. We saw what happened on 9th May. That background is there. But why do you think there was this inability of his counsel to argue and defend the case? How do you perceive it? Uh, do you think that, you know, the, the, the strength of the judgment itself, how do you look at it just legally? Well, uh, even before that, one criticism that I have of uh, PTI in this case is the is how they have criticized the judge. For mm. me as a lawyer, we win cases, we lose cases. Mm. A judge has spoken through his judgment. You may like it, you may not like it. But if you name and shame a judge in press conferences, any political party, for a lawyer as somebody who is a professional lawyer, I personally don't like it. And that mm. ploy should have never been uh, deployed. It has been deployed by many political parties in this case, very vehemently by PTI. And, uh, you know, the judge's name is all over the place, even before the judgment. Mm. If this happens, then one side who's about to lose a case will do that to any judge. So this mm. is something which is disappointing. And this is something that we must educate that should never happen in the first place. Mm. Uh, and, and because the judgment is now out there, if you don't mm. like the judgment, our, our legal system is such that there are two rounds of appeal. You appeal to the mm. High Court. If you don't mm. like the judgment of the High Court, you go to the Supreme Court. And but if you, you don't like the judgment of the Supreme Court, the buck stops there. It's a case of pressurizing the judiciary. It's a case of bullying. That is not new yeah. to the style of politics that we've seen. Isn't that true? Unfortunately. That's, that's, absolutely, that's absolutely correct. And mm. this unfortunate aspect has not only stopped to the lower judiciary, it has come to the high court, it has gone to the Supreme Court. Mm. By many, by all, by across the board, this should stop. So now we have a judgment. Under the contempt of court law, we have the right to criticize the judgment, to make fair comments on the judgment. 
the under the contempt laws one of the defense to the contempt law is fair comment on the judgment you cannot be convicted of contempt if you do a fair comment on the judgment but you cannot criticize the judge by his name by whatever he's been doing in the past so now we have a judgment for instance one kind of one snapshots thing, one this can, the kind of one, snapshots that were shared on twitter it's clearly unprecedented is it not and then they were later also they've been proved to be inaccurate and false Uh, uh, which which is absolutely correct and as i see we we hit a new low every passing day which should never happen in the first place and laws should be very strong for instance the judgment if you see the judgment there are some very sound aspects very great reasonings in the judgment some very funny aspects for example the judgment in paragraph 35 says that uh, the chairman of the pti was so diligent in in giving his uh, tax returns that he mentioned four goats that he sold so if he can mention for as as minute a detail as four goats that he sold why can't he disclose this so uh, uh, uh the, so the judgment is out there i'm sure uh, his lawyers will disagree with the judgment and say that this is uh, uh, this is an oversight and this is a minor technicality the other side will say this is a substantial substantial error which goes to the root of the judgment the judgment says there is a there is a deposit of 30 million in the bank account of the chairman pti which is gone unexplained as you've mentioned Uh, uh there have been many opportunities this case has been in at least in the media for over a year so that what means this case is in the courts for even more arguing when they were present that's yeah, also so, you know something uh, that so, that so but in this case but one thing that i there are always two sides of the picture they should have if you ask me should they have been given one more opportunity they the arguably maybe they could have been given one more opportunity uh was were the opportunities enough i would say yes they are enough but at times more opportunities have also been given because in our system they always say that just justice should not only be done but it should be seen to be done so some critics might say that okay another adjournment wouldn't have harmed anything the timings is also critical but as far as the judgment is concerned it's very simple there has been a sale of a watch that has been admitted that the watch has been sold the money has been received all you need to prove is two things who did you sell the watch to that's a very simple answer what did you do with that where did you deposit that money and did you disclose that money But so it was a bit complicated that, that, case that the fact that ample opportunities were provided they were not you know sufficiently utilized it's quite possible another opportunity would also have been you know thrown under the bus so to speak but the question is what the treatment of the former prime minister in the legal process has far exceeded the treatment of the common man in the same scenario is it not true as a lawyer do you agree with that absolutely that always happens in high profile cases uh, those cases are expedited those cases are been given special treatment mm. in fact in the all high profile cases and i my clients and we've been a victim to this all cases at times are adjourned you normal litigants are not even allowed to enter into the courtroom and mm. uh, and uh, uh, under normal circumstances you have to be there in each and every date of hearing otherwise your warrants of arrest are issued but under high profile political cases the 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 high profile politicians never turn up and they've been given very special never treatment turn by never up is it Always. again i would have to disagree on that and i think i'll i'll uh, i'll come back to you i'm going to go to the studio sir so sir never turn up is something that haris is saying and uh, do you think that again that parallel is uh should be drawn because we've seen you know other political parties uh if you are if you have lawyers again and again if you're giving any opportunity for them to turn up in a case like this for them not to choose to do it seem to seems to be a kind of a strategy does it not <clears throat> maruk i'll be very honest uh because i would like to talk about more about the political hmm. history of such cases hmm. i think uh, this case is a little different from what has happened in the background hmm. i think yusuf raza gilani always used to turn up he was also s- present in the courtroom hmm. uh when judgments came and he was ousted as the premier hmm. i think uh, if we talk about uh, raja pervez ashraf's case hmm. they used to turn up now in this particular case i think mr khan because he politicized the judicial process so much and ultimately hmm. polarized the judiciary so much hmm. this is what eventually caused him to reach to an end where his legal counselship was even worried of what he mm. was trying to do because every day after the proceedings of the court i think at least for 2 3 hours 
Mr. Khan used to educate his voters on internet mm. or what was really happening. Yes. So, so there's a mm. difference between what happens within the court. Mm. There's a difference between what ha happens under the cover of the law. Mm. And there's a difference between what happens in the political atmosphere of the streets. Mm. So maybe Mr. Khan mixed up that political hype he was trying to create and uh, the, the legal uh, formalities or the legalities or the modalities of the court. Mm. Now, this case is actually not about selling of those articles alone. Mm. We need to be clear about it. Mm. If you look at what was elections, election commission's actual case against Mr. Khan, it was Dishonesty. the non-disclosure mm. of these particular articles being bought by him in 2018, 19 and 20 mm. and not declaring them in his tax returns of the previous years. Mm. This was a simple case that falls under 63.1p, mm. that is dishonesty. You've mm. not been declaring particular things. It was mm. not even about selling particular things. Now, mm. that automatically le leads us to two legal ways ahead. Mm. Now, one, one legal way ahead is for Mr. Khan's counsel to go to the higher courts and to talk about why did he fail to not disclose these items at mm. the first place. This mm. is the first thing. Mm. Despite the PIC being moved by a journalist known mm. as Mr. Ibrar, mm. and then ultimately Islamabad High Court ordering the cabinet division to release the details. Mm. I think we've been aware yes. of that. Yes. And second, mm. the second perimeter, if they cross that uh, legal bridge mm. through the courts of law, that would be where did the money come from and where did the money go? Mm. So this case, coupled with foreign funding case and coupled with al Qaeda trust case. Mm. These are the three major so cases. The question, so so yeah. one common thread in all yeah. these cases is where did the money go, right? Where did the money go? Mm. And, and, and Mr. Khan, in his entire political narrative, mm. before 2018, before becoming the premier mm. of 250 million people, mm. he had one narrative stronger than any other narrative. That was, was one honest. law for the poor man and mm. one law for mm. the premier of the country. Mm. Mm. And he suffered from his own words because mm. he was dishonest to what he said to all his supporters and today I see no one at the roads, mm. I see no silent protests even, I, I don't see anyone at Twitter, I don't see mm. anyone on Facebook because people also know mm. that it started with the cipher, it went, it went on to the American conspiracy, mm. it mm. came to a mm. graph watch, mm. ultimately it ended up not even appearing before an additional sessions judge mm. and then expecting that you would not be arrested like the common man gets arrested in this mm. country. Right, fair enough. And that equality, again, uh, Murtasab, that equality, that, uh, you know, that uh, constant uh, synonymity to the riyast e Medina that we kept on seeing as far as the former Prime Minister is concerned, uh, you know, that unfortunately seems to have unfolded in a very unfavorable way. Isn't that true? There is uh, <clears throat> an inequality even uh, comparing the politicians. Mm. If you remember, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, while defending his uh, trial in Lahore mm. High Court, mm. he was forced to stand up. Mm. He was abused and insulted, humiliated in the court. But mm. he didn't say anything. Uh, it reminds me when he was defending his case in Supreme Court of Pakistan, he mm. narrated his own experiment, mm. his own experience. He said when he was the president of Pakistan, Justice Hamudur Rahman, who was then the chief justice of uh, Supreme Court of Pakistan, called him, said, Mr. President, I want to come over to record your uh, statement in Hamudur Rahman Commission. And he said, Mr. Chief Justice, you are the highest judge of the highest court of my land. You will not come to the president. The president will come to you. And he said he went there. Despite this is, the fact this is, this is what we mean when we talk about equality, when we mean, you know, that there should be one standard, when we mean that justice should be seen to be done. I will come back to you. Haris, one of the things that it is said, and I'm quoting from the judgment itself, is that the accused has committed offense of corrupt practices by making and publishing false statements of declaration in respects of assets required by way of gifts from Tosha Khana and disposed of during the years 2018-2019 and then later on and making and publishing a false statement and submitting false and incorrect declaration in material particularly relating to form 8 of the year 220 to 221. 
he has been found guilty of corrupt practices by hiding the benefits accrued from national exchequer willfully and intentionally this this paragraph itself it's quite incriminating again you know i i don't think that i gave you a chance to answer the fact what you see as the strength of this judgment as far as the appellate process is concerned clearly the the former prime minister does have the right of appeal how do you see it what is the strength of it well as you've uh, mentioned that the uh, what judgment says is pretty simple and pretty straightforward that mm. uh, you've admitted he sold a gift the mm. gift was worth some million rupees yeah. you were supposed mm. to declare that gift in your tax returns and also before the ecp as a member of the parliament if you mm. don't do that the election act says under in terms of section 174 and others that this constitutes a corrupt practice Mm. this this was the entire in a nutshell case against the former prime minister well he was not able to establish why he did not declare uh, now he has grounds of appeal at times the uh, in appeal one of the grounds could be an oversight could be a minor error on his part could be that they have declared but you know uh, maybe they were not able to they were not given an opportunity to establish that they had actually declared so as far as the judgment is concerned it it's it, it for me it is sound it is there uh, however in a lar in larger aspects should the election commission or should uh, the uh, courts be given the power to disenfranchise uh, politicians like that that's a wider mm -hmm. debate then mm -hmm. but for now as the law of the land stands this but judgment to, is but, but then if we want to change the law we need to go to the parliament and then if we yeah. want to change anything we need to have a presence in the parliament which the former prime minister did not deem fit to have or his party he thought that you know he had the kind of popularity that didn't need a presence in the parliament at all so so in fact he's losing out not only that debate but also any part of the political process at all you know his party as a whole is sitting out today so unfortunately if you ask that's me, also if you ask me personally uh, one of the biggest mistakes that the former mm. chairman or pt has done is and i think they realize it now is to mm. walk out of the party uh, so mm. if you disenfranchise yourself your voters in fact when the matter went to the supreme court some of the supreme court judges made these observations yes. once you are out of the party how can you now criticize the parliament you see if being out lo you lose out on so much for instance mm. you could have had the leader of the opposition you could have had exactly. a say in the appointment of the prime minister once you mm. sit out and you just mm. protest which is which is your right but it doesn't factor in anywhere in the constitution that you protest and you can have your own prime minister it doesn't work like that so that was a big mistake uh, you let mm. down yourself you let down your voters uh, people who voted to, uh, and... before i go to self also what about the bail process you know even if if this judgment stands What, would you think as a lawyer that uh, the former prime minister will be uh, usually in cases like this as far as the bail is concerned what are the chances well, of him getting bail uh, well uh, if you ask me normally the courts hmm. have been liberal in this regard the only scenario would be if this judgment is suspended on the hmm. first day or on notice only then there will be bail because but if the judgment is not suspended in the past we've seen some politicians were lucky to have their judgment suspended some politicians mm. had stayed in jail for a very long period of time on similar offenses so it depends uh, on, on the, the bench it depends how the case is argued but uh, uh, or if it's uh, argued uh, at all sorry me, i'm saying or if it's argued at all because we saw that it wasn't defended today Let me, well, it wasn't let me different today, but but realistically speaking, they will file a, a, an appeal. I am I am a hundred percent sure an appeal will be filed within a short span of time, and I'm sure whoever the councils will be, they will argue it on the first day. The government and the election commission will oppose it on that very first day, and if the opposition has been successful, then of course bail will not be granted. But if the judgment is suspended, then there is a good enough chance of the bail. So I think the matter would now rest with the Islamabad High Court. to decide the merits and demerits of the case but the bottom line is hmm. if you are not able to present your defense before a trial court the appellate court under the law of pakistan hmm. cannot look at new evidence this is one thing which will come under the way of uh, the pti chief because hmm. if they were not able to put up a good defense before the trial court in 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 pakistan law in appeal you're not allowed to introduce new evidence so this is hence the trial court is very important even if you think the judge is biased at least put up your defense 
and then you can argue in appeal that we gave all these documents we showed all the proof but the judge never considered our arguments so this mm. is where i don't know how their legal team has handled it and what was their uh, i think they were more fixated with changing the judge than having the case argued and they were unsuccessful in having the judge a uh, uh, changed and uh, now they will have to face the consequences right. unless so, there are there are this this just there are precedents unless the high court uh, shows such an indulgence that they set aside the judgment and remand the matter back to the trial court for giving another opportunity to the pti chief to present his fresh evidence is because that at possible? the moment Does there is no happen? evidence is that possible it does it happen well, in, in other has, has, well, has it uh, happened in other well, uh, Arok, as a fellow lawyer you know everything is possible in pakistan right okay let me come back to you sir do you think this is also a part of the larger kind of strategy as far as the pti is concerned that you know the judge is wrong or you know there's a bias or you know trying to target like i said judiciary also politicians also that has been the overall strategy as far as the pti is concerned rather than using you know defending themselves rather than going by the book so to speak we haven't seen that right Maruf, what what exactly has been happening in the past i believe 12 mm -hmm. months there have been two things or rather there have been two notings that i've personally taken uh, observation of the first thing is that mr khan tried to assert a lot of pressure on the establishment mm. this is what really happened mm. And then after the blunder that mm. was carried by PTI on 9th of May, they, they felt that their hard line against the establishment was not something anti-establishment, it was more anti-state than anything else. Right. They failed after uh, understanding that maybe this was not the route to get their problems resolved. Then afterwards, they started to assert pressure on the judiciary, uh, judiciary or the judicial process. Right. What really happened was that maybe PTI was thinking that by asserting political pressure on the judiciary, they'd getting they'd be getting a favorable decision. Right, and that unfortunately it that unfortunately didn't happen. The the principle of equitable justice is that you're innocent until proven guilty. Right. Mm -hmm. This is a common principle. Right. The very fact that they did not appear before the trial court is enough to establish guilt right so i think so that even in the higher courts of law that new, fact new evidence cannot be submitted at this right, case because they might be referring it to the trial court once again right unfortunately right. that's right. all the time that we have thank you so much for being with us Saif Timshed Bariyar sahab thank you for joining us Haris Azman thank you for being with us Murtza Salangi sahab thank you for your time overall of course as far as uh, the decision is concerned at this time uh, the former prime minister has the right to, to of appeal and we will know uh, you know more as uh, the appellate process continue but at the moment of course he stands disqualified at the moment of course, it remains to be seen how and what shape uh, whether any uh, his political party will take, who will be the who will be leading the party, and overall, uh, you know how they will go into the polls because we're looking right at that time now. Thank you so much for joining us today on First.